Hello biology students. Today we're going to be talking about biochemistry and advanced macromolecules. Let's jump in. So we've learned about the four major types of macromolecules. Here we're going to be learning about them in a lot more detail, especially since we've been talking about them all year long. So carbohydrates. We've talked about the fact that they're made of atoms and a carbohydrate is a big macromolecule. It's going to be made up of the atoms carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which we abbreviate as CHO. Its monomer is called a monosaccharide, meaning one sugar. The major function of carbohydrates is short-term energy storage. And we have a lot of different examples. We have a monosaccharide that is just one of these building blocks, such as glucose, that looks like this. Most monosaccharides and carbohydrates are going to have this shape that's this circular ring of a carbon. We call it a um, five or six carbon sugar, right? This is a six carbon sugar. Disaccharide has the prefix di instead of mono, meaning it's going to be how many sugars? Two. And so some examples would be table sugar, sucrose, or lactose we've learned about before, which is milk sugar. Polysaccharide, right? That poly means many. So that's going to be when we go over three sugars. Some examples are starch, which we find in our pasta and our potatoes and our bread. And cellulose, which is the stuff that makes up the cell wall in plants. And then glycogen, which is going to be found in animals when we store short-term energy in animals. So again, we need to be able to recognize the shape know the examples, functions, and the building blocks. Next comes lipids. We know our lipids are our fats. They are also made up of the same atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, CHO. The monomer is a three fatty acids and one glycerol. And I know that's a mouthful, but what is that referring to? Well, this is the basic building block of almost all fats or oils or lipids. And that means there's these three chains of these fatty acids that are listed here. And they're going to be connected on top to this thing called a one glycerol. This kind of should remind us of our shape of our phospholipid, which just had about two of these and had a phosphate on top. All right, but a pure lipid, phospholipids aren't pure lipids, but they have some lipid component to them. They're these three fatty acids and one glycerol on top, and we do need to know this basic shape. We know that compared to carbohydrates, their job is long-term energy rather than the short-term energy. They also function as insulation. And then we know lots of different examples are phospholipid. They're also cholesterol and fats and oils. Next is protein. We've been talking about proteins really recently. Now we have the same atoms plus a couple little new stuff. We have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, that's our CHO. But then now we also have nitrogen, which makes us have the memory tool CHON to remember the parts of a protein that make up the atoms. All right, the basic building block, we've talked a lot about it since we've learned protein synthesis, is an amino acid. And we know amino acids will form an amino acid sequence, sometimes called a polypeptide. We know that there's 20 different types, but the basic structure of an amino acid is going to follow this, where there is this amino part that has the nitrogen. There's going to be this central part that's a carbon. There's going to be this R thing here that's variable, meaning the different types of amino acids will have a different component here. And then there's going to be this weird group over here. This basic shape is the same for all amino acids. And no, we don't have to memorize it for sure, but we do recognize that this looks very different than the lipid basic shape and very different than the carbohydrate basic shape. We need to know the major protein functions. One of the things that's not a function of proteins is energy and the things that are a function are movement such as our muscles that's protein transport like hemoglobin that transports oxygen in our bloodstream speeding up chemical reactions done by all types of enzymes we learned about lots an example of an enzyme would be lactase that breaks down lactose that sugar that's in milk there's defense proteins those are called antibodies structural things like hair nails bones 
are made of proteins. Lots and lots of functions. Most of our major genetic traits, right, they're going to end up looking like our proteins. The hair color, your eye color, etc. Right? So we've been learning about this throughout the year. Now we're just pulling it all together from all of those previous units. Lastly, we have our nucleic acids. We know that nucleic acids are also made up of atoms, atoms such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. But now, on top of the chon, we also have phosphorus. So they're all made up of somewhat similar atoms, but a couple of them had a couple additions. In this case, it's phosphorus. But that shouldn't be hard for us to know because we know that the monomer or building block of nucleic acids is a nucleotide. And one of the parts of a nucleotide is a phosphate. Phosphate is really based in phosphorus. So it should make sense that the only thing that has a phosphorus is the nucleic acids. We also know that sometimes the base is referred to as a nitrogen base, which also helps us remember the nitrogen is part of nucleic acids as well. And the last component is a sugar, and the sugar is different depending on what type of nucleic acid we're referring to. The functions of nucleic acids are to store genetic information to be passed on to offspring. We've been learning about that through our genetics unit. And then we also, through protein synthesis, know that a single gene in DNA can be copied into RNA and make proteins. That's the process of transcription and translation. And we've learned a couple different examples of nucleic acids. The two different types are shown here. Hopefully, even though it's small, you could tell me which one's RNA and DNA even without looking. DNA is the one that's made of A's, T's, C's, and G's for its bases. It's the one that's double-stranded with the sugar deoxyribose. That's the D for DNA. RNA has A, U, C, or G. Remember that major difference is the T and the U. It's single-stranded and it has ribose sugar. And we also know that there's two major types that we focused on this year, mRNA and tRNA. And we should even remember where those play a role in protein synthesis. So in summary, it's really important for us to, in this part of the year, not only remember the functions and examples we've been talking about throughout the year, but to know the atoms, the monomers, and be able to identify them. Some people might want to make flashcards because this is a lot to kind of remember and they make for good flashcards. Lastly, we're really now focusing on the atoms and the monomers and remembering this basic structure. So being able to say, okay, the ring one, that's the carbohydrate, that's a really good thing to be able to do because you have to be able to identify them visually. Oh, this one has a nitrogen in it, and it's kind of flat. That must be an amino acid. Oh, I see three chains and something on top, and it's only got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That must be a lipid. Oh, I know the three parts of a nucleotide. This must be a nucleotide. You are going to have to be able to visually recognize these things. So I hope that you were writing all of this down and maybe even tried to draw some pictures. Wonderful job, guys. Woo!